welcome back to the channel. My name is Calvin, also known as Art Farm Welding. In this video, will be a part two continuation on from last week's video that you are seeing the visuals of right now, which is on the screen. So if you haven't already seen last week's video, scroll through the video history or look in my description. There will be a link to it. Watch that video first so you can have a, a, an understanding of where we're starting at right now. So it's the next day now. Here is the new pipe. It has a square branch on it that is in line with the rollers. So I'm going to weld the flanges first, put the square branch on after, and that way there it only has to rotate horizontally to the side so it won't have to do a full re re revolution while doing the flanges. So I'll put that on last. And this here is the prep that I'm dealing with. There is a gap all the way around. I tried to minimize it and have it equal all the way around. But this is gonna require three runs on the inside and three on the outside. So the machine I'm gonna be using is my Thronius Kempi or Kempi Thronius, however you like to call it. TPS400i. So the pipe that I done yesterday allowed me to um, do some R&D. So this is the setting. It's gonna be a synergic it's going to be a synergic um, spray transfer. Again, the settings of the gas that is programmed into the machine because it has presets. Here's the gas presets that it has. This gives you a lot of spatter and um, this is the one. Though, it, though the, the gas I'm using is 12%, it doesn't have that exact setting. 12% CO2 for the gas running at quite a high flow rate gonna be around 25 liters a minute and the wire is one mil solid core wire copper free coating So I'm going to try to talk and explain what's going on without ruining the experience of just listening to the, the, the welding noises. The Fronius machines have a unique pulse noise. I don't know about it. I've, I've, it's a weird pulse. It's always happening. It's not like a, um, it's not like a, a pulse you'd get when you set your pulse on, on TIG welding. It's just always there hundreds of times a second, which gives it this crazy hum. But you can see two visuals right now i filmed myself welding both sides of the flanges one with a welding filter over my camera so you can actually see the arc shots and the other one is of my body so you can kind of reference what's happening so i was trying to work smarter not harder so i set my gun up on a crude makeshift v stand to to hold the, to hold the torch so I didn't necessarily have to rest my forearm on a V stand and hold it. It had some pros and it had some cons. One of the cons was this pipe was not tracking squarely. It was going forward and backwards. So the arc length kept on changing. One one revolution on the pipe was enough to move it enough that it was affecting the quality of the welds even I could possibly have got porosity with how far it got away at a certain point but that was one of the, the cons another issue I was finding is the gap was so inconsistent that with me adjusting the power and the torch angle on the fly and the gap opening and closing the runs were very inconsistent luckily I was able to hide the first run with the second and third run that definitely helped out to make the overall pipe look good but ideally you want consistency because that gives you a consistent weld I I would if I was to do this again I don't know what I'd really change different I think experience is the only thing that would help me get a better weld I was not rushing but at the same time I'm, I'm on price so I'm trying to get this done reasonably fast which means that I may have turned the power up a little bit more than it needs to be you know just for that bit of speed but the faster you go there there is a there is a, a limit where it starts to deteriorate the quality of the welds on either how they look or structurally how they are but 
yeah, for me, I, I tried to go as fast as I reasonably could. But each run, where they was spinning at a consistent speed with the manipulator, and I was filming with my camera, they were taking 9 minutes 30 seconds to do each run. So, if you think about it, 3 on the inside, 3 on the outside, clean up with the wire brush between each run. That was coming up to nearly an hour for each flange. And, in theory, it's an hour, but we all know how... It's not an hour, it's a lot longer. So one of these pipes took me all day to do. And yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a lot of work. If you watched the last video, you could see how much checking that I was doing. And adding the square branch onto it and welding it around. It was, it was a lot of work trying to make sure it was perfect. So I'm coming up to the final run on the first flange. And yeah, making these pipes over these few days, I was experimenting between pulse welding and spray transfer. So the pulse welding is, is a combination of spray transfer, but the way how it's set up, it allows the molten pool to solidify and stay in position better than spray transfer. What I was finding, if I was doing the first run with spray, I was getting a lot of undercut or the first run wasn't kind of you weren't getting enough height in the in the bead and it was just more flat so I turned it to pulse was able to get the nice consistent looking leg length and height in the weld and then I would switch over to spray transfer for the final two runs so some of you lot will be wondering why am I dragging why am I pushing why am I alternating between the two of them Personally, I found the welds to come out nicer looking when I'm dragging. Now, there's a big debate whether you can drag or push welds. Personally, machines have come so far since a lot of these rules were made. And a lot of people are still, they've got in their head a lot of the old information that they was taught without knowing the leaps that the new technology have gotten to. So, if you watch certain videos from more popular welding um, YouTube channels like WeldTube and stuff like that they've tested push and pull and they found out that there is almost no significant difference so just bear that in mind but for my case I was dragging and pushing out of comfort for example or because um, the weld is thicker when you drag and it's more narrow when you pull or when you push sorry so um, yeah it's just it was just preference really Now I'm doing the final run on the outside of the flange and yeah, three runs was plenty enough. I tried to do two runs but it did not look nice and I switched to doing a third run. That gap is just it's just too big. You, you need like a first run to be like a route for the second two runs to come out nice. I set myself up a V-stand and I um, welded some weird bits of plate onto it so I could kind of lean onto the pipe you're about to see some dodgy welding so basically if your power torch angle and manipulator speed ain't perfectly set up what happens it affects the quality of the weld and here's a prime example this took a long time to kick into effect because the manip manipulator was spinning ever so slightly that the weld was building up ever so much over and over and over and the torch angle was probably in the wrong position that this was a catastrophic failure so yeah this probably took a few minutes of welding for for all of these variables to sync up and this is what happened the weld just dripped out on itself torch angle was probably off and the manipulator speed was too slow and the, the material just built up on itself quick fix though i just ground it out i cleaned it up linished it off and i re-welded over it and blended in the start stops it's on here a little bit dodgy because I wanted to weld the last flange. So yes, it got put on at the end and the reason so, because it would be clashing. So the result came out okay. I don't know what to say, it's, uh, it's in there. It's not the best, but it's far from the worst. I'm very self-critical of all my work. so. I would always um, say I can do better, and of course I can do better. Three runs on each thing, 